Hey, what's up? I'm Leech. I want to show you guys how I made Little Taste of Heaven. I've seen Eric Valentine do a bunch of these videos, just kind of like walking through an already finished song and showing you like where decisions were made um, and how certain sounds were made. And I figure maybe this will be helpful for somebody else. I know it's been helpful to me just um, going back over this tune, seeing how I did certain things. I'm actually in the middle of putting together a live set that uses a hardware synth to accomplish the synthesizer that happens in the middle of this song. And so I had to go back and, and check stuff out um, and see how, how I did that. It was about seven years ago that I made this. Um, so let's just, from the top, take a quick listen and make sure everything's in order. Just a little taste of heaven All you were to me, all you were to me Was just a little taste All right, 
So there it is. Um, yeah, definitely one that is well suited to headphones or a car. Um, since the essence of this song, I think, is that synth in the middle that's panning from left to right in sort of this um, trippy way. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's start with uh, just the beginning. So we got snap sounds, just using ultra beat, not really. I think one thing I love about Logic, even though I now exclusively use Ableton, is things just sound good off the bat in Logic. I feel like Ableton requires a lot more sculpting. So the more comfortable I've gotten with sound design, the more I've used um, Ableton. But when I was um, starting out, like, you know, it's just a, what have I got there? A closed hat and percussion, so. All right, so just like a little white noise with a quick uh, attack decay. Um, yeah, and I even like second guessed myself, it looks like, I was like, ah, oh, this, these snaps sound a little, uh, you know, too digital. So I, I recorded some real snaps, but. It sound terrible. I, I clearly was just like, well, here, I had a compressor on it. Let's see what happens without the compressor. It's fine, but clearly sucks in the context of the uh, of the song here. Yeah, it's just, just totally rubs me the wrong way. Um, yeah, vocals. Definitely did, uh, I think I did some pretty generous pitch correction. Um, had maybe I, yeah, I did, right? Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't pitch correct. These are back in the days when I could sing, apparently. Um, yeah, I had a cold that day. I had just been dumped like the day before and then sat down and worked on this. And, um, yeah, highly recommend getting getting dumped and working on music the next day. I had a cold, so like the vocals sound kind of nasally, but in a way that I've since come to really like. If I can do it right, I find that this won't be like every other time. Yeah. Like every other time. It's a nice nasal vibe. Looks like I'm pumping a little bit of reverb there. Oh, interesting. I have, I have it pitch corrected going into the delay, um, but not on the track itself. So the reverb is gonna be pitch corrected, but not the track. Um, what else have we got? Obviously the piano, very spacey, trippy, that tape delay. I think I just wanted something that didn't sound like that. Like a, it sounds like a sampled piano right now. And then the EQ just kind of takes, chops off the brightness completely. Um, and gives it a more interesting sound. I don't think it would work for a whole song or like a solo piano tune, but for this, when it's playing second fiddle, I, I think it's really nice. Huh. Now the tape delay sounds way too much. Maybe, maybe I reset something here. Oh well. So that's the piano. And then this expander thing was just kind of this like, this massive patch going back home. I don't think I even added much to it. I don't remember how it's, 
sounds without, oh no, I don't want it to, well, my synth is trying to take over the uh, controls here, but I will worry about that later. Um, yeah, I don't think I even had any automation going. I think that's just the pad itself and massive, how it's, um, how it swells, how the envelopes are programmed in there. Um, staccato synth, very basic. Another massive patch, even though you don't need massive to do this one, it's just like a straight up uh, wave, just a square wave. It's like the most basic synth patch possible. The only other bit of trickery here is the reverse vocals leading into the um, verse. And for that, I just, uh, that's, that's a more common thing you see where I recorded the vocals with reverb first and then um, took just the wet reverb from that, reversed it, and then plugged it into the beginning here. And I really like the effect on this song. I haven't had much success with that effect on other stuff. Um, it might just be the reverb I've been using, but I'm pretty pleased with how it sounds here. Um, So that's that, and then we go into the synthy chorus part. So there's really only two things at play here. There's panning, which is automated. Well, three things, volume. So the pan is straight up, just like hard pan left, hard pan right, hard pan left, hard pan right. Um, and then it resets um, every region once we get to like, so this, this first chunk is kind of like an A section and then B, 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 B. Um, so it, the pan resets here and here. And I don't remember why I did that. I think I was just lazy and copying regions over, just like duplicating, and it just cut it off in that way. But no, no complaints. I think it works in the context of the mix. Um, and then also volume. I don't even remember doing this, um, but just volume drops sort of uh, inverse of the pan movement. So it goes, sort of creeps in and then fades out as it reaches the other side and then fades in when it hits the middle. So it's gonna be, it's always gonna be the loudest in the middle of those pans. Um, And that's without the volume pan. It's a lot less dynamic. And then here's without the pan automation. Just kind of no movement, stays around the right side, it feels like. It's just a little taste. And then the other, so the ES2 is like, freak, like it's amazing. I, when I reopened this project, I, I was sure that I used a massive synth or something on this, a massive plugin, but it was just Logic's little old ES2, which has just the ugliest user interface imaginable. And um, to like it, it looks like 
it was designed in 2002 or something. But it it sounds so good. So here it is on its own, which is the automation. No. I think the only thing, the only like, you know, sneaky element that this is adding is the glide. I love the glide in the ES2. I have a big old Prophet 08 now, and I've used a bunch of other synthesizers, but the glide of the ES2 is just so juicy. Oh, yeah. If we crank it up to like over a second, let's see. It's like that THX um, uh, THX intro thing at the beginning of movies. Where they start with low and high and kind of cross paths. It's a great, great sound. So then next thing we got is the tremolo effect, which is the sound like you could plug anything into this tremolo and it kind of gives you the essence of that um, synth sound so we've got it at one six at 16th notes 16th note triplets depth of 100 percent got a little baby bit of smoothing just so it's not too choppy um because there's already a lot of choppiness we don't need more we can smooth that out a little bit and then it looks like I had the phase at 170, which is interesting. I, I don't know why I made that decision. I guess it just sounded good. Um, and then the symmetry at 50%. So they're left and right are inverted. And this is another example where like, I really miss a plugin like this in Ableton. I wish I, I wish I had this. Um, the fact that it's able to work with both sides so beautifully and you can sculpt. I, someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or something, um, but I just love this uh, plugin dearly. Uh, let's see how it works. Oh, okay, I was automating the phase. That's how this works. There we go. So I'm automating the phase of that tremolo. And I'm not doing anything to the rate. I don't know why I had that uh, automated. And it hits 180 and minus 180 at the furthest left and right points. So when it gets to the middle, there's no phase. The phase hits zero at the middle. Cool. So that's... That's the synth. Um, I would love to find another use for a patch like this in a song, but... And this is just... It was the right time, the right place. Um, okay, strings. Actually, the choir would be next. This is also a tremolo. Um, just there's there's no funky business going on. It's just one sixteenth, slightly out of phase, fifty percent symmetry, um, no smoothing, just squares. The sampler, I just used some basic church choir thing that Logic had for me. Just a little and then the strings, let's see. Same deal. Tremolo is kind of the name of the game on this one. There's some smoothing there. Out of phase again. Symmetry, 50%, so not quite as... Uh, 
hard as the synth. This one is a 16 note triplet, whereas this one is straight up 16. Um, all right. This, just another massive patch. And I think I did a little more sculpting in this patch than I did on that first one. But the biggest bit of sneakiness is just that pitch wheel going up and down. I don't know if we can even see it. No, there it is. It's very faint. And there's some cutoff shaping as well. Then we have this ARP thing going on. It's also a massive patch with Logic's standard ARP. It's like very simple, 16 16ths triplets um, up and down. A little taste a heaven. Looks like I started with the silver boxoid patch. Oh yeah, I forgot about the bass. Vintage synth bass. I think that's just another, e yeah, it's just another ES2. I think the whole channel strip is a Logic preset. God, I miss the days when my ego would let me just use entire channel strips that were pre-built. Um, so there's some distortion drive going on, looks like. Oh no, echo. Yeah, not a whole lot to it. It's mainly just coming out of the ES2, the sawtooth wave, a little bit of detuning, and yeah. God, what an ugly, ugly plugin. That sounds beautiful. Pipe organ. Guess what's on it? Yeah, just more tremolo. This one at 90 degree phase, um, 16th. Really ripping into that arpeggiator. If I had to do it again, it might be a few bars shorter. And then at the end, the vocals are good. Little harmony. Yeah, and then a last little taste of that synth. And then what happens? Yeah. I used volume to just 
cut it right off because it had a little bit of release that would have tailed otherwise. And that is pretty much this song. Um, yeah, I was, as I said, I was inspired to do this because I'm getting this synth together specifically for a live set, recreating it, and it's been so difficult. And so I've dug back into this. And um, yeah, hopefully you're able to make something like this synth or take some kind of inspiration from this. I know for me, watching other people work is incredibly inspiring and usually encourages me to make um, original stuff that I really vibe with. Um, yeah, and this, the whole idea behind this synth in the first place was just trying to copy this Sisyphus song called Calm It Down, where Sufjan's vocals in during like the drop pan from left to right and kind of tremolo. And I couldn't get it, but ended up with this. And yeah, it's just one of those happy accidents. And um, hope this has been helpful, entertaining or something. Let me know if you have any requests or, or other questions, happy to answer. Just drop me a chat. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.